Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to MIDAS e-learning uh, session. My name is Puya Banibayat. Uh, I'm in charge of technical support and training team at the uh, New York office of MIDASoft, and today I'm going to show you some modeling and analysis skills uh, with MIDAS Civil for modeling and analysis of networked height arches. So, um, some of you uh, guys attended the first and the second course of the e-learning uh, sessions. And uh, as you know, this, is, uh, uh, this training is the third course of our new technical series called e-learning courses. <clears throat> so, in the February session, uh, a series um, which started by a presentation from Dr. Grigor Waldman of HNTV. Uh, he presented a network tight arch bridges and uh, then the session followed by an in-depth discussion and case study about um, that type of bridge which was last week. So in the first session Dr. Wallman shared his uh, years of experience in design of the uh, you know network tight arch bridges and then in the second course I explained analysis and design considerations for that type of bridge. And today we are going to learn how to create finite element modeling of a network tight arch bridges and uh, how to run different um, setup and run different type of analysis. So uh, in today's session we're going to have three parts. First part is introduction and having a flashback to the, uh, to the last session talking about the project that we're going to model today. Uh, then it will be the modeling part which we define the material sections uh, generating the geometry and uh, finally we apply the boundary conditions and loads. And the third part will be analysis and design. Uh, so we talk about the moving load analysis, uh, final stage analysis which you know we're going to use some of the functions like un unknown load factors and hanger force tuning. Um, then we have the, uh, we will show you how to set up the construction stages and how to perform the construction stage analysis and if we get time uh, we're going to, um, uh, you know, time history analysis for hangar losses. Okay, so the first part of the introduction, uh, we start with the summary of uh, in-depth discussion, what happened in the last session to just uh, knowing this flow and uh, then talking about the MIDAS graphical user interface for whom are not uh, familiar with the software and then talking about the project introduction. Okay. So last session uh, we talked about the uh, design and construction of the network tight arches and whatever we have to consider whatever um, we have to consider the, during the, I mean, for the design of these type of bridges. So, um, as a summary, we came up with two uh, analysis, two important analysis. One which would be final, final stage analysis, another one is construction stage. Uh, which, if you remember, uh, we said that um, uh, in the final stage we have a kind of linear behavior in the uh, material and in the elements. Uh, While well, in the construction stage we have we are seeing nonlinear behaviors like uh, we are seeing that uh, sagging in the cables and uh, material if you are using a concrete the concrete is not set and uh, we have to use those uh, nonlinear behavior. So um, for each of these uh, uh, stages we introduced some functions in Midas Civil which can help you to uh, complete that uh, analysis at that stage. So for the final stage, uh, we talked about the unknown load factors, which help you to find the uh, forces, required forces in each hanger or each cables, uh, to come up with the final geometry which, uh, with uh, the certain tolerance. Then uh, talked about the cable tuning to show how we can adjust those uh, forces that the software gave us to come up with the as uh, you know a limitation for a uh, bending moment or displacement or anything which is uh, needed for you I mean is important for your design then we talked about the 
time history analysis and showing how to set up a time history analysis uh, to model the hangar loss, which is a pretty critical uh, issue for, um, you know, structures which are based on the, um, you know, cables or hangers. Then for the construction stage analysis, we talked about the, how to model the nonlinear material, how we can um, set up those, uh, see those effects, time-dependent effects, uh, mm, if we have uh, composite section, how to model them, and also, uh, and more importantly, about the lack of feed force, which um, during the construction of these type of bridges, which, um, you know, having the uh, hangers or cable elements, it's pretty important to know how much force we have to apply in each stage uh, then the final stage or when the bridge is constructed completely, we are having the uh, correct geometry. Okay, so uh, today I'm going to uh, have the modeling, I mean create two models for you, one for final stage and one for construction stages. Okay, uh, so um, this is a general graphical user interface of Midas Civil for whom are not familiar with. So just quickly showing some part of that. Uh, here in top we have the main menu which uh, under each icon we have, uh, under each um, ribbon we have uh, lumped so many other options. We just make it so easy for the user to find uh, whatever they want. For example, if you want to, uh, you know, model the structure, so you now you have to go to the structure tab or if you want to create a node and element or do any changes on those, so you now you have to go to the node and element. So it just make it uh, very intuitive to for the user to just um, learn the software pretty fast and follow the uh, modeling pretty quickly. Then we have the tree menu. Under tree menu, as uh, some of you know, um, whatever we model, whatever we define, it will be shown up here. It could be sections, material, uh, the, the geometries, type of element that we use, loads, boundaries, everything that you define, we can see them under tree menu. And that helped the user a lot uh, to understand and see everything in one shot uh, to see what uh, is modeled and what is required to be modeled. Or if they want to change anything, that will be very fast to do any changes. So you can, for example, if you want to change a section, you can simply drag and drop it on the page, uh, on the main menu, uh, sorry, main uh, modeling view, and it will be changed instantly. The message window shows up uh, at the bottom of the, uh, this page, and uh, that's the way that uh, software communicate with the user. So while, while you are mo doing the modeling, if you do anything wrong, uh, you know, uh, some elements and then the analysis are not compatible with each other or you know you have some duplication software comes up with some message uh, warning message or error messages uh, then let you know that what did you do wrong and then how to fix it so that's pretty helpful instead of like um, you know sometimes you need to just check hundred things to understand what did you do wrong so uh, that message window help a lot uh, in terms of modeling and you know overcoming the problems. Uh, you see a rendering view, you see how uh, nice uh, renders you can get from the uh, uh, Midas Civil. And uh, we have the main model view, as you see. You can divide the model views, you can have a couple of the uh, windows at the same time, or you could have uh, windows and then the tables at the same time, as you see uh, we are seeing here. So uh, you can have two tables or like couple of tables and windows at the same time showing the results and then the modeling for the comparison. Okay, so we're going to go through the software and you will get more familiar to that. And what we are going to model today is a, a network tight arch and uh, the span is 300 feet uh, with a height 60 feet and uh, with the, the width of 30 feet. So totally we are using a 15, uh, sorry, 30, uh, 30 uh, hangers at each site and as you see they are, uh, this is the hanger arrangement. All right, so we're going to model also two lanes of uh, traffic. Yeah, 
and uh, running the uh, moving load analysis on them. Okay, so um, I open the my desk and uh, start modeling. So this is uh, the general, well, I mean, uh, the model that we're, go we're going to create. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, you see how it's done. Okay. Uh, by the way, we're going to share this uh, video recording and also the uh, presentation. So later on, if you want to go through that and do it yourself, um, you have the references to follow. By the way, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, send your questions uh, to the question option. All right. So um, as you see, we have these tabs starting from view, structure, node and element, properties, boundaries. So uh, this setup in uh, these icons are set up in the in a way to start from left and then finish in the right. So uh, structure, you see, you can just model the beams and column, and um, you know using these wizards. And if you use doing any other type of structure like an arch or the, anything, you can just simply use these. Um, wizards. Then it will be node and element if you want to create your structure from scratch, which this is what we're going to do today. Then we're going to be property, material, and the uh, sections, then boundary, then loads, and then uh, analysis. So uh, the flow is starting from left and then ends to the right. Okay, so uh, as I say, I'm going to uh, start from scratch and uh, generate my geometry uh, step by step, you see how uh, this is done. Uh, just uh, to save time, I can show you how we can create the material and section for one of them, and then uh, later on, I'm gonna just uh, open a new model file. Uh, sorry, I, I'm gonna borrow the uh, material and sections from other model file that I have just to save time. Okay, so to define a material, you can go to the uh, uh, property tab and then click on the material property and new dialog box opens for you. And then by clicking add, uh, you have options. You can define the steel, concrete, steel reinforced concrete or any user defined material. Now uh, I select steel and uh, then selecting the um, steel 09 and from them I am just uh, defining one of the um, one data, uh, options from the database of ASTM but you know you have these options here you can select from any of the codes um, and also you can define your, your your own user defined if you want to change anything in this you can simply uh, do the changes to, to the steel. So okay and then the material is selected so if I go to the section tab, I can also define the sections. But to save time, uh, if you already uh, define the uh, sections and material in other model, you can simply import them. So if I click import, so I can go with the construction stage option. And these are uh, five sections that I already defined in the other model. And I can say OK, and then the sections will come to this uh, part. So you can just click on them one by one and see um, their shape. Close. OK. So uh, just uh, please take care of that. This is whenever, whatever we model, uh, you're going to see them under the tree menu. So as we go, this will grow up. All right, so let's go back to the node and um, element. So what I'm trying to do first, I'm uh, uh, defining one of the arches with the uh, one, one side of the arch, then uh, create the hangers. When it's completed, we're going to just uh, copy that uh, uh, arch to the other side and then connect them together. All right, let's see how it's done. So uh, click on the create node. I'm going to create three nodes. One is zero, zero. Uh, let me set it up to keeps and feet because my dimensions are based based on feet. So zero zero. Then the other one will be three hundred in x direction, and then y and z are zero because my total length was three hundred. Apply, and then to create my arch, I'm going to create 
another node in coordinate 150, 0, and 60. So this is exactly based on the geometry. So if I click on that, I, I see three nodes. So if I go to the front view, I see such option. So uh, I need to create one more node, which will be at negative 75, 0, and negative 300. I will tell you why do I need um, this later. Okay. Close. And now I want to create the uh, create my uh, structure. So this will be my total span or tie. So if I go click on the create element and select a material, we have only one material. We're going to use uh, one material for entire structure. But definitely you can, I mean, this is uh, for simplicity, but definitely you can assign different material to different part of the structure. And I'm selecting a tie and creating the node, uh, creating an element from here to here. So it's just only one piece element. Then I'm going to create my arch. And uh, for doing that, I can click on the create line element and curve. So uh, arch by three points. And uh, I want to divide it into 16 pieces. Or so uh, P1 will be this point, P2 this point, and P3. So this is assigned. So as you see, I already selected the uh, section as an arch. And if I go here, you see that uh, this is created. So still, we are in the 2D. Uh, now I'm going to create the hangers. So the hangers, uh, for creating the hangers, I created a one node uh, in the far distance. So I'm going to just one by one uh, apply to this to, to come up with the, uh, you know, the configuration of my hangers. So again, go back to the create element. This time for creating the hangers, I'm going to use a truss element. Now uh, for the arch and for the tie, I use the general beam element. Now I'm going to change it to the truss. Uh, we can use tension only, but because, um, as I said, we're going to model, uh, create two models. In the first model, which is for final stage, uh, we have nonlinear behavior, uh, sorry, linear behavior. So um, all the tension only or cables will transfer to uh, a truss element. So that's better to use a truss element from now. So the cable elements are working only in the uh, when we are doing the nonlinear analysis, because other than that it would be like a normal truss. Okay, so I just change my section to cable and connecting the node from here to here. Uh, by the way, we have two options here called intersect. Um, so if you check them. Uh, means whenever the element is intersecting any node or any other element will break down to, you know, that many pieces. So, for example, here when this intersecting this tie, it breaks it down. So, I want to do that. So, definitely I'm going to keep this uh, checked uh, right here. So, we do it one by one. So, totally we have 15 of them. And as you see, the angles will change uh, from left to right, so now as go uh, as far as we go to the right side, we're gonna see uh, lesser uh, decrease. So there are so many um, other ways to uh, create such a hangers, but I prefer to do that. I I feel more comfortable with this method. So. Um, but you can select any other method as, as well. All right, so now I need to delete this uh, element because we don't need them at all. So let me just select these and hit delete and it's deleted. All right, so I have my uh, half of the anchor uh, hangers are created. So let's close that. Now we have option called mirror as you see here. So I can simply mirror this uh, option. So let me, uh, this hangers, select entire hangers and uh, use a mirror as it, um, it asks me uh, in the x, y, y, z uh, plane. So uh, I want to go with the 150 because 150 will be our mid span. So this is I'm selecting 150 feet. Uh, do no changes. And you know, uh, I'm not checking in the intersect because if I check the intersect, 
uh, whenever the hangers are intersecting each other, it's going to break it down and create a new node. But this is not uh, what's happening in real life because each hanger is working completely separate from, from others. So I'm uh, check, the, check them off and apply. All right, this created. Uh, now there is one thing we have to consider here. If I zoom in, you see these uh, hangers that I use that um, mirror option. This is showing a one node here, but actually there is no break in the node. For example, if I turn this down, no, no. Uh, you see this element here, it starts from here and ends here. So it means the i at end is here, j end is here. So there is no intersection between this hanger and this uh, element. So it means they are not intersecting each other. But uh, the hanger cannot stay on the air, so definitely it has to be connected. So to ensure that this connection happening, uh, we have to use the intersect. So we use the intersect option and select only this part of the structure, the uh, tie, and apply. So if I zoom in now, you see that this part, which was continuous, now it breaks it down into two uh, uh, small pieces. Uh, if you don't do that, uh, actually you come up with uh, some uh, you know, singularity error because the hangers is on, on the air, there is no support and there is no connection to the structure. Okay. Uh, Alright, one part of the uh, structure is created. Now, um, what we can do, we can just uh, uh, start rotating it uh, because it has a, a 10 degree uh, angle. If I go to the side view, so these options right here are the view options. So if you go, you can go with like an isometric, see the 3D view, you can see from the top, you can see from the side, or you can see from the front. Now we're going to go to the side because I'm going to rotate it 10 degrees and then you see how it's uh, rotated. So for rotating this structure, you have two options. One is to rotate the beam, uh, nodes, another one is to rotate the elements. If you rotate the elements, actually the, uh, some uh, no, nodes remain here. So I'm not, I don't like that, then I'm going to delete those. So uh, to prevent that one, we're going to rotate the nodes. Click no Rotate. Uh, and by this clicking on this option, entire the structure will be selected. Um, we're going to move it, we don't want to copy, and the number of, I mean, angle of rotation will be negative 10 degree, because we're going a counterclockwise, or clockwise, uh, if you take this uh, X and Y. All right, and then about and uh, two points. So we can go with the X, Y, or Z, but I want to go with the two, two points, because I want to exactly rotate it uh, about this, um, x-axis or the tie. So I can select it, first point, and then the last point. I think I selected it wrong. Yeah, because the first point is going to be the point of origin, and the other one would be the other end, and apply. All right, if I go to the side view now, you see that it's uh, actually angled and 10 degree uh, rotated. So this is exactly uh, what we are looking for. Okay. So if you hold the control, uh, hold the control key and then the wheel mouse button, the middle uh, click on the, your mouse, so you can just simply uh, rotate them 360 and see the different angles. All right, so this part is also done. Uh, now the next part is uh, to copy this to the other side uh, to do that, I just simply select entire thing by select by clicking on this. It will be select entire thing, and again we're going to use the mirror because um, now we're going to mirror it exactly about the uh, x-axis with the 15 uh, yeah 15 feet away from the point of origin. So this time uh, we're gonna go to Z X plane. Why? Because this is, uh, if you look at this, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and this is the z-axis will be perpendicular to those. So we're going to stay in the uh, z-axis uh, and then copy it uh, for the 
about the y is equal to 15 feet because the total width of the structure was 30 so I'm selecting a half of that and this time we're going to copy that because uh, we need the structure to have uh, in both sides and apply all right you see that uh, structure is created on the other hand as other side as well okay now is the time to is the time to generate the uh, uh, cross beams and uh, longitudinal girders okay so uh, to make it easy let me just deactivate this part because I'm going to work on the tie so uh, we can select the top part and deactivate them and now we have only the ties so it just make it easier for me to um, generate those but if you want to see them you can also activate them. all right so um, I want to show you a couple of the functions on Midas Civil one of the function is extrude so extrude means if you have a node you can create a higher uh, dimension element for example if you have a node you can create a line element if you have a line you can create a 2d or plate element and uh, from 2d you can create a 3d now I want to select a couple of the nodes and then extrude them and create a um, line element. So uh, I want to select a tie for the section and uh, then let me select my nodes will be one here one the other hand other end one here I'm gonna go symmetric Okay, just another one. And finally, we're going to have this option. All right, so we selected um, seven nodes, and uh, I'm going to give them because we're going to extrude them in the y direction. So I say in the y direction, go. Uh, five times and multiply it six times because total le uh, width of the structure is uh, 30 feet and apply so you see that uh, these uh, cross frames or cross beams are generated all right now is the time to uh, generate the longitudinal elements let me go to the side and uh, select the top and then deactivate them All right, so if I go to the top, I want to create some uh, longitudinal members. So again, I can go to the create element. This is another technique for uh, creating the elements. One was extrude. This one, I want to be direct um, generation. So I'm going to just show you this one again. So I select a girder for the section. And uh, nodal connectivity, I ensure that the this is set on the general beam. click on the nodal connectivity from this end to that end and this time just ensure that the intersect is uh, connected because definitely the uh, longitudinal girder should have connection and intersection with the um, cross beams otherwise they don't work together it will be completely separate elements and uh, this is not what we're looking for alright so I created five longitudinal members and close alright um, everything looks good so far uh, one more thing so now I want to activate the entire thing clicking on this option activate all so let's see what uh, what are we missing uh, so okay the bracing uh, should be placed now uh, to generate the uh, bracing uh, let me just you know deactivate the rest of the structure to do that we can just simply select these these guys and then inactivate them that's one option but there is also a simpler option if you come to the tree menu and double click on the arch it shows you uh, this arch is selected to this element and I can select these by double clicking on that and then say activate everything is gone and we are just seeing these guys so let me go to the top view 
and start uh, creating these uh, hangers, uh, sorry, the bracing. Just ensure that this on the beam element, uh, general beam element, selecting the braces and start creating them. So from here to here, here to this, this to this. So here again, I can use that mirror option. That's, you know, because anywhere that uh, you have that um, symmetric geometry, you can simply use that mirror and, uh, you know, that just make it shorter for you to do the modeling. But here I don't have that much of element. It's like a couple of them, so I prefer to do it manually. But if you have a large number of the elements, uh, definitely that option uh, helps you a lot. And finally, the last pieces. Yes, uh, it looks good now. Let me just save this model. Okay. All right. So um, this part is done. Uh, almost the structure is completed. So okay, we're done with the modeling uh, of the geometry. Uh, so we have a 300 feet um, uh, long bridge with the 60 feet height and then the 30 feet uh, width. All right, uh, so let's uh, generate these uh, loads and then apply them to the structure and also create the boundaries. So before that, let me um, do quickly create some groups. Uh, groups are actually used for, for uh, construction stage analysis and also for moving load analysis. So uh, by group it means, uh, for example, groups, we have structure, boundary, and load. For example, for the structure group, it means you are uh, selecting a couple of the nodes and elements and then assign them to the certain group and then later on in the construction stages instead of uh, activating or you know constructing each element you are activating a group of elements so that makes it easier and makes more sense so to do that uh, we just uh, let me just define some of these uh, groups for you so for the structural group um, are going to have deck stage. So uh, in this stage, we are not using these guys um, for the final stage because the model that I'm creating is for the final stage. But I'm just creating that because for the next model, we're going to use the same model, and definitely there uh, we need them. All right, so let, let me just name it. So deck stage uh, from 1 to 4. So if you give this suffix, it's going to create them all in one shot. Then we're going to have arch stage from 1 to 5 at. And then uh, we have the hangers uh, start from 1 to 30. If you remember, we said that we have 30 um, hangers at each side and at. All right, so these groups are created. Uh, I want to add a couple more, um, like a cross beams, because for the modeling the uh, moving load analysis, we need that uh, cross beams. But this time we need only one and add. And uh, yeah, that's it. So let's close that. And uh, for the boundaries, also, let's quickly model a uh, couple of them. So one of them will be end support. Add. And the other one will be temporary supports. Um, which uh, we define a four of them. One, two, four, and add. It's created. So if you remember, last uh, session we discussed about how the construction of these bridges are, 
and then how we have to or how we can use that those temporary supports and different type of um, supports that we have all right for the load uh, let me define um, a self weight first this is something that we cannot skip from this structure and then we have superimposed dead load and then finally we have the pre, pre um, uh, tensioning and uh, for those we have 1 to 30 uh, I tell you why do we need to um, define uh, 30 forces because uh, in this stage we're going to apply only one uh, pound force on each uh, each hanger and then we can just do them uh, select them all and apply that uh, one uh, foot but uh, one pound but uh, for the purpose of uh, this analysis of this uh, uh, bridge uh, which has the hangers we definitely need to define all these uh, load group loads uh, and then later on use them. I'll show you how exactly this will be uh, helping us. Alright, so we're done with the grouping and uh, let me go back and start the uh, complete the modeling. So first of all I want to assign the boundaries to the group. So for the boundary if you remember we're done with the node and element, we're done with the property and now we go into the boundary. Define support, uh, we can select the type of uh, group of support, end support, and then D all means uh, all degrees of freedom, uh, uh, translational degrees of freedom are constrained. So select all these nodes and all these nodes. By selecting this in this way, all the nodes in these two ends are selected. And apply, so they are applied. Okay. And uh, then <clears throat> it's time to define the um, static load cases. If I go to the load, Under static load cases, we have to define some names for the um, um, static loads. The first one will be self-weight. Uh, the type is dead load and add. Then we have superimposed dead load. Please don't get confused uh, with the static load cases name and the uh, you know group names that we defined because. Uh, we are using the similar names because we're going to use them all, uh, assign them all to the same uh, structure, same element. So just don't get confused. These are the static load cases. Those were just the groups. And add. And as I said, the groups is required definitely for uh, defining the uh, construction stages. pretensioning so uh, it's going to be pretensioning 1 and I'm selecting the uh, PS this is a type so we're going to de uh, define 30 of them so again uh, we need this because we're going to come up with uh, assign those a unit loads to the structure and then uh, by help of software we're gonna find out what would be the um, best uh, pretensioning force in each hangar uh, which uh, give us the uh, you know the straight uh, structure geometry so that's our final destination and if you um, because this is you know the first training for some of you I don't use the uh, text formatting but uh, it's very easy to create the text format uh, I mean uh, make these all uh, in the Excel and then copy paste them here uh, with help of MCT command shell but uh, I don't want to confuse you so I think this one takes a little bit more time compared to that one but um, I prefer to do it that way for the first day All right, ten more to go. Three, 
28, 29, and then the last one. Okay, so uh, we are done with the uh, static load cases. Let me save it. Uh, now we can start assigning the uh, loads. So first of all, uh, in the static load, we have to apply this self-weight. By clicking self-weight, uh, you can select the load case, which is self-weight. This is we just defined, and then you can define the group for the self-weight. This will be important when we're doing the construction stages. So in the Z direction, negative one, and just consider that whenever in the, in the software, whenever you have uh, capital letters like a um, capital Z, capital X and Y, these are the global coordinate system and when you are with the, uh, you see the lowercase uh, X, Y and Z, those are the locals. Now it will be global uh, negative one, add and it's applied. Alright, so now I want to apply the superimposed dead load to this structure. Let me just ensure uh, everything is done correctly. Okay, perfect. So uh, the superimposed dead load will be applied on the on uh, on the girders. So let me inactivate this again. Go into the top view, and I wanna uh, select entire. I mean all the uh, longitudinal elements, and go with the beam element. Before that, I want to set it up to the pound and inches. Okay, uh, so my load will be negative 70 pound per inch. And uh, to select all the longitudinal element, I can just select them one by one. But Midas is giving you an uh, option for filtering. And if you select the X, it means if you select the entire the structure, only the elements which are in the X direction will be selected. So that's exactly what I'm looking for. So I select those, uh, just uh, set up the load case name and also the load group and apply. So let's take a look at it. Display, and yeah, as you see, this is the uh, distributed load applied on the uh, all longitudinal girders on display. All right, uh, we're done with this. We have just uh, one more step to apply that unit forces to the uh, structure, to the hangers. All right, so before that, let me um, assign those uh, um, groups. If you go to the structure group, I want to assign the uh, hangers to each group. So just selecting these. Let me just turn off the filter with a none. And now by selecting each element, by the way, whatever I'm selecting here is two of them at both sides. Because they are symmetric, I just uh, uh, have no problem to um, select them both together. All right, and uh, just drag and drop it here. You see that number of element increases to two Initially, it was zero because zero element was assigned to this group. So let me just quickly do that for uh, structure, I mean, hanger two, hanger three, hanger four, hanger five, hanger six. So still, we have not uh, assigned any load to them. Uh, we're just defining that these are just a ba um, you know, basis of those. First, we have to do that, and then we can uh, switch to the, you know, assigning the loads because in this way it will be more organized. Okay. Eleven. Twelve. Thirteen. Fourteen. And finally fifteen. So we're done with the one side. Let's go assign them to the negative uh, angles one. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 
So 29 and then finally the last option and 30. All right, as you see, all of them have uh, two elements, two uh, element assigned. And now we're done with this. Uh, let's go and assign the uh, forces to each group. All right, so uh, to do that, I need to uh, uh, go to the load and this time temperature and pre-stress and then uh, select the pretension load. So by pretension load, uh, I have the list of, um, you know, all the load cases and also the load groups. All right, so uh, what I do, I just uh, bring in the uh, second uh, tree menu and then start uh, like double clicking on each hanger and then select the hanger one, pre-stressing one, and group one. And then applying the unit uh, force, I set it up on the pound because as I say, I want to just apply unit force uh, to the each hanger. And then when we got those factors, I know that that will be the uh, force, okay? Just uh, let me just do it faster because uh, I want to cover as much as I can. Why? Why? So when we're done this, this will be the next step will be, uh, uh, you know, assigning the uh, moving load. We can skip the moving load part and then uh, you're now going to uh, what is like more specific to this type of structure. And then if you guys have any question regarding this, uh, uh, you know, we can discuss this more in detail. So as uh, we discussed in last session, uh, finding the best uh, hanger forces is a optimization uh, problem and uh, today I'll show you how big it can be uh, if you want to do the hand calculation because uh, when you go through the hand calculation, you're going to solve a uh, pretty large uh, matrix and it uh, can really be very time consuming and uh, sometimes doing a simple mistake, um, you know, ruins everything. So that's very reliable to uh, use a, uh, you know, software like Midas that um, has already all these function in that implemented uh, just for, you know, it's very easy and convenient to use that. And then also if you have your hand calculation, you can also compare them because uh, not only software uh, solve the problem for you and then show you what's the best uh, for example, hangers, and then you can also uh, uh, tune them, uh, but also provide you those uh, influence matrix, which you definitely need them uh, when you're going to do the hand calculation. So generating those matrix also with hand, that's another uh, issue with hand calculation, which, you know, uh, because you have to consider a lot of constraints and also uh, all, all the, I mean, depends on the number of the hangers, so it might increase, uh, you know, exponentially. So you will see how civil can help you in this way. All right, so I'm almost done. Uh, five more to go, and then we can uh, run the analysis. All right, 28. Twenty-nine. And by the way, if we don't uh we didn't get a chance to cover everything, 
uh, we're going to share this uh, tut uh, tutorial and also model file with step-by-step uh, -step modeling and then you can practice it yourself. All right, so um, if, we, if I go to the work tab, let me close this one and if I go to the load tab, we defined uh, 30 pretensioning forces uh, on each hanger. I mean each hanger means each two hangers because they are symmetric. I just applied both of them, uh, assigned both of them in one group. All right, so uh, we are done with this. Now next step will be moving load. I'm just uh, skipping this point because uh, I want to also show you how uh, you can use the moving load tracer which is a unique function to my civil and especially in this type of breed it can help you a lot. Uh, but let me show you more important functions. Now if we, I think we are ready to run the analysis. Let me save it and uh, run the static analysis. All right, so this is the message window. You have to always check this because uh, sometimes there are some uh, issues coming up. There is no warning, no error message, so it means that the structure is run perfectly and uh, we got the results. So to see the results, you can go to the uh, results and for example, let's check the displacement. Displacement under the self-weight, uh, let's say DZ and I want to check the uh, legend or if you want to see the deformed shape, this will be also the deformed shape based on under the self-weight. And these are the value you can see on the right side under this contour and then uh, you can compare. Now, what we can do, or you can also check them based on the, all the forces that we apply. For example, this will be, uh, this is exaggerated for, uh, shape. So just showing you uh, where the uh, displacement happen. For example, when you have this press stressing in this element, this happens here. All right, uh, now we want to find what is the best um, force here, uh, what's the hanger, best hanger force for us to come up with the uh, straight geometry in this uh, structure. To do that, uh, we go to the result and then here under the cable control, we have two options. One is unknown load factor, another one is cable force tuning. So for the unknown load factor, if I click that, um, you know what, I uh, just to save time, uh, I open another model because here we have to define some constraints. So I open this model, which is a final stage model. That's exactly the same geometry, the same material, everything is identical. And uh, whatever I have here is just, I define just a load combination. The load combination one, which as you see, uh, we are seeing all the uh, pre-stressing force, self-weight and superimposed dead load with the factor one. So all of them have the same effect on the structure. Okay. And uh, what we did, we go to the uh, cable control and unknown load factor. So I already created an unknown load factor, but let me just show you how it looks like. We have uh, two parts to set up. One is the constraint. Constraint means, for example, this is your structure, right? You want to ensure that the displacement of none of these nodes on the deck uh, goes beyond a certain point. For example, here what I did, I set it up, let me show you, modify this, I set up the um, displacement of the node 131, which is right here in the middle, uh, middle span, uh, in the Z direction, uh, should not go beyond 0.75, uh, 0.75 inches, which is uh, in a range that, I mean, depends on the uh, design criteria, but as Gregor mentioned, uh, the maximum uh, tolerance for this uh, construction of these bridges is one inch. So I just become more conservative and put 0 0.75 uh, for upper uh, bound and lower bound. Okay, so I assign this and uh, I define one, two, three, four, five, six, seven nodes. Select the seven nodes on each uh, cross beams and uh, ask the software that my displacement doesn't go beyond certain point or which is 0 0.75. But you can also add, for example, reactions. You can check, for example, the reaction on these nodes 
or these supports do not go uh, beyond certain point or displacement thrust forces or beam forces and also if you wanna uh, just having a, this arrangement in a way that for example bending moment in this element is not going uh, beyond this point so we can say that then the second part is uh, uh, this forcing function so this is my uh, load cases which I define them by unit uh, uh, by unit load unit uh, pretensioning force and I check them as an unknown but the self weight and superimposed dead load are having the factor one because uh, there is no way that we can um, you know control the self weight the self weight is self weight I cannot multiply it by any factor um, and then superimposed superimposed dead load the same way but we can change the pretension uh, pretensioning in the hangers. So this is why I selected that. Now I said that get unknown load factors and then these values coming up for me. So these values, you see pretension 1, 2, 3, so these are the values, actual values that I need to apply to the structure that, they, uh, that my structure, this constraint that I define, does not go beyond this uh, 0.75 inches. Okay, so you see for all of them this value is given and uh, you remember we discussed about the influence matrix so if we click on the influence matrix depends on the number of the constraints that you have defined and then the number of the pre-stressing or tendon that there are hangers that you have this um, you know uh, create a, uh, a, lo uh, a large uh, matrix for you when then you have to uh, solve this matrix for uh, coming up with that um, you know, uh, to solve that, um, find the maximum for I mean the forces required forces in these elements. Anyway, just going back now, you got this force, and then now you can create a make a load combination. So we can call it practice one, and then save it. So it's saved as a uh, load combination. So we are done with this part. Now, if you go to the load combination you see that the practice one is created and all the forces required for the hangers are assigned here. So um, now I, I know that I, I have to apply these forces on each hanger because each one is uh, related to one of the hangers to come up with the uh, almost zero uh, de deformation on the deck. Okay, so where do we use that? We use this option in um, uh, construction stages because when we go to the construction stage we definitely should give the uh, real uh, pretensioning force in each hangers alright so this is one part but beside that uh, let's say some of the factors that you got here you don't like them because some of them are pretty big uh, some of them are small and then this is not in range of your area so you cannot apply that for that force let me show you how to uh, tune that forces all right. So before that, uh, let me just define quickly define a group, which I'm going to use. So on high and uh, go here in a group. I want to just create a new group. Call it um, girder. All right, and then select these elements on the girder, exterior girder, and assign that. Alright, so uh, this is just uh, a structural group, there's nothing to do with that. Uh, if I go to the result again and then under the cable control we have cable force tuning. If I click the cable force tuning, let's see what we got here. Software gives me an option to tune my cables. How to do that? I'll show you. First of all we have to select the uh, load combination that we have. If I select the load combination LCB that we defined, everything is unit force because we define it as a unit force. But uh, we want to go with the practice one. This is the force that the uh, software gave us, right? This is the, the one that we uh, got from the unknown load factor. Now, uh, somehow I want to see how we, what is the effect of these uh, uh, pretensioning or uh, forces in the hangers on my structure. So this is why I defined a uh, group, uh, let me find it, find, girder, 
and uh, I call it girder moment beam force MY and add it and I want to delete this one and select distance and modify alright and close so now if I go here you see this is the bending moment uh, if I go with the keep feet maybe makes more sense for you so this is the um, bending moment happens uh, on the structure based on the this cable tuning that the cable forces that we have so uh, let's say you are forced to uh, limit the bending moment or your section is in a way that it cannot handle more uh, moment than a certain point so let's say I'm going to limit this to negative 130 and then in the upper load I want to limit it to 165 okay and then show result so this is my limit all right or let's just put it 160 all right so now I want to uh, ensure that this bending moment based on these forces goes uh, exactly in this range so what can I do you can just uh, manually change them or you can you know change them here um, the number or the easier way is just you know you can just drag it up and down and you see whatever I do change here it directly affects the structure uh, the bending moment so if I increase this so this goes down that's perfect now I want to adjust this one so it seems this one doesn't have any effect on this element and uh, maybe this one has some effect because you know this structure is all uh, um, working together therefore, the, therefore when I'm changing this one the moment here is uh, also changing alright so uh, by doing this tuning you can just come up with the um, exactly the format that you want or you want to just uh, adjust them to become in the same range so definitely you can do that too okay but uh, uh, another way is if you want to search that and do it, let the software does it automatically for you. So you can just select them, for example, say this and this element to be in this range. You can define the range and apply, and it provides you uh, certain forces. Okay. So this is uh, two. These are two functions that I want to share with you. These are pretty important and help a lot, a lot, a lot in the uh, you know. When you're designing a um, structures which have cable, like a cable state, suspension bridges, um, definitely tight network tight arch bridges. So these are um, cable based, and definitely um, these two functions can help you a lot in the uh, you know analysis and design. Just make your life so easier, and then you ensure that the results are correct. And um, for example, later on you can just check the uh, bending moment based on that bending moment or you know displacement or deformation based on the uh, forces that we define uh, unfortunately we are running out of time and I don't get chance to cover more material for more thing for you because what I prepared um, let me see if I have uh, If I have okay, I have the uh, moving load uh, run on this one. So what I want to show you is the, this unique feature of my civil, which is moving load tracer. So I define two lanes. You can just see them. Two lanes on the structure. One is here. These are two lanes on the structure, and uh, define two vehicles and define the moving load cases, which you know um, runs on the structure. Now, if you go check the result, let's say going to the forces and then bending moments. Bending moment based on the moving load. Moving load maximum and apply. So this is the bending moment of, uh, this is actually a uh, envelope result, which is maximum bending moment of uh, each element which experience in a different load cases. Now, let's say you are interested to know what is, uh, what load arrangement or uh, vehicle arrangement causes the maximum bending moment in this element. So let's check the number of element, element 80. Okay, this is one of our hangers. Uh, sorry, the 
um, uh, Arch elements. How to do that? We, for that one, software provides you a moving load tracer. So click on that and say bending moment and forces. Now I want to select the key element AD. Click on that. It appears here. And I want to check the bending moment under the moving load maximum and apply. Or the minimum force. Yeah, for example, the minimum or the maximum negative bending moment happens in that uh, structure, that element is uh, based on the, uh, this load arrangement. So when we have two vehicles side by side, so each of these showing one vehicle, so we have two vehicles side by side and then we have distributed lane load uh, on the structure and this is causing me the maximum bending moment. So why this is important for you? Um, see here is the thing when we are getting the force uh, forces the best pretension forces on the structure we have to check the structure for uh, moving load as well so uh, if you have a larger structure you have a, like a wider structure then you have so many lanes and then so many moving load trace moving load uh, cases so it takes time to each time just run it run it run it run it so for that one uh, by using this moving load tracer you can just click on this option and then software save this uh, moving load as a static load okay save it as a static load for you and um, what happens you can just um, model this static load on your structure and each time just for example change your section and then run it you can uh, you now change the size of a structure and then run the analysis but this time will be static analysis, which is way, way faster. For example, in a couple of seconds, in two, three seconds, you can get the result. Whatever, I mean, how big is your structure, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, this is one, and uh, unfortunately, I cannot cover um, the other part. I prepared another model for you. I just quickly show it to you uh, to see what we got. So what I did, um, what I did, is uh, that I just uh, used those fo forces as a pre-stressing force inside each uh, hanger. So just to show you, if I go to the work tab and uh, pre-stressing forces, if I right click and show the table, you see that these are the forces that I obtained from the first stage or the final stage uh, model. Okay, whatever I got there. I apply to the structure, I just rearrange them in Excel and just copy paste them here. It's quick, it's very fast. And now my structure, each hanger, has the real uh, force in that. Okay? So what I did, let me just show you the uh, steps. I also uh, modeled 30, uh, sorry, 42 stages. So let's uh, quickly review it together so I, I cannot show you the modeling part because we don't have time but just showing you the uh, flow of this um, modeling so deck one will be this part will be activated so let me just show the supports as well all right so uh, I use the temporary support as you see in the middle parts um, uh, in the in the Happy Hollow Park that uh, Dr. Wallman presented there they use the uh, cable state um, false works because they didn't let them to use the support. But here, uh, for the simplicity, I just use the simple support because what is important for us is not the those uh, you know cable cable state structure is but the structure itself. So this is why I model it this way. All right, so let's go quickly. Uh, part three, part four. So the um, tie is completed now we start constructing the uh, arch so these are the oh, sorry these are the temporary um, elements we are using here just to you know create the structures exactly the way that uh, uh, they used for uh, happy hollow press ram bridge so the hangers also uh, the uh, arch is also complete now is the time to apply the hangers so as you see the hangers are installed one by one from left. I hope you see them because they are pretty tiny element and you may not see them now. 
All right, so we apply these one by one, and it goes all the way to the, um, you know, hanger 30. So still we didn't remove the, um, you know, temporary supports because if we do that, the structure collapsed because there is nothing to uh, keep them together. Now when we install these hangers, it's a time to remove the uh, temporary supports one by one and those are gone. And this is my final stage. So uh, this is uh, what I see in the structure. Now uh, what we can do here is that uh, when you uh, you remember the, the loads that we forces that we use in these uh, hangers? Here's the point. Those forces, those pretensioning forces, are the final um, um, final forces in the structure. But during the construction, definitely uh, those forces are not enough. And that this is what's called lack of fit force. So we need additional forces to keep the structure together during the construction stages. So. Uh, for doing that, uh, I can show you the, uh, for example, forces in these. If I go to the result, and uh, let's say forces in the truss forces, and then the value. All right. Uh, if I go back to the hanger one. Oops, this is very large value. All right, now it makes more sense. So uh, whatever we get here, if I go with the max, okay, now it's better. Hangar three. So this is giving you the forces required for construction stages. So during the construction, in each stage, you need different forces. For example, I have to apply 63 kips uh, in this stage on this. Next time when I apply the next hanger, this one. And then finally at the end, if you go all the way down, uh, the forces comes to exactly the same forces that we defined, uh, uh, we found out in the first uh, model, which was the final stage. Okay, um, so this is also another very important factor. And also you can get also the um, lack of fit force for the truss element. As you see, uh, for each element, we get the pretensioning force. This is the load that we applied on the structure, and we define that the uh, each hanger should have. And this is the um, uh, lack of fit force, which means it's required to be added to structure. So in addition to the pre-stressing force that we have, we have to have uh, even more forces on that to come up with the, this much of force during the construction. But uh, as you saw here in the model, this is the force that constructors uh, definitely are interested in and they want to know what is this force because uh, during the construction they definitely need uh, such a forces. Okay, so um, I think I should conclude my presentation here. Sorry for um, not having enough time. This is a, uh, you know, a big model and we need to consider so many things and, uh, you know, creating so many construction stages, groups, and those. So these are requirements, uh, although they are simple, uh, but takes time. So uh, sorry for not being able to cover everything. We will be sharing this uh, information with you, uh, put it on our website, and you have access to download the uh, you know model file and also the uh, tutorial file. And if you guys have any questions, please feel free to um, call us. And uh, I'll be so happy to answer uh, all the questions one by one. This is my contact information. So you can send email directly to me, or you can send it to uh, Midasoft at uh, midasoft.midasuser.com. All right, uh, thank you so much for um, attending the session and have a great evening.